The collaboration by the West University, South University, and Jefferson Westside Neighborhood Organizations created a new way of thinking about how Eugene regulates residential development. These organizations were inspired to look past the density versus livability debate, and by involving a broad spectrum of community members, they found creative ways to enable denser housing projects that would complement the neighborhood's character, thus strengthening neighborhood livability. The legacy of this project is that it set the stage for our community-wide Envision Eugene planning process, in which protecting and enhancing neighborhood livability is a key part of our community's vision for the future. Current and future residents will be able to enjoy these neighborhoods for generations to come, thanks to the foresight of our dedicated neighborhood leaders. So I, I was looking for a property that would be close to downtown and smaller than what I had and I just thought this was great because they were, I had two daughters and they were just married and planning families and this would be a good location because I, I like to garden as well. That was one of the big draws was that I had a backyard that had a southern exposure so it would garden well. and. Um, I guess I didn't, I saw that property uh, across the alley, but I thought, I didn't think of it. I, mean, I, I, didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't go around and canvas the neighbors to see what their, what their future might hold. So I was so surprised when I uh, saw the uh, sign out there and it said that it's up for rezoning, which I didn't know what that meant. I went to inquire about it and I found very little, uh, help and I just felt so alone and I didn't know where I was going to get any information uh, because when I went to the, I guess I went to the planning department and I was told, why are you asking about this anyhow? And I said that I lived right across from the uh, proposal and it was like, well it's kind of a done deal and with a wave of a hand it was, you know, there's this overlay of the property, the, the plans are overlaid and there's not much can be done. But there was a hearing, so I, I came to the hearing. I found out that they could build uh, very, very high and very close and very many units that would be uh, totally blocking out the whole, I mean, that they could come up so close I had nowhere to get help and I didn't know what to do myself and I just felt really trapped into the, that I had bought this property and, and here I was going to be unable to even function here as I had planned. It was scary. I was terrified actually and I, I don't know, it's, it's uh, hard to remember what it felt like because it isn't, the threat has been removed, but it's there. Well, I was just very grateful and renewed in the goodness of of truth, you know, and that that it could be heard, that people would still listen, and that there still was hope that uh, the little guy could be heard, and and uh, not, not to go back to that place of I can't do anything and it's going to happen and it's out of my hands and to know that I'm a part of it and I can do it. I mean, I can I can be a part of it and, and it was just a great relief. I mean, it's like, whew, I can go on about my day and not have that hanging over my head as to what do I, what can we do now, what what next? And, and everything that we did, I was grateful that I did it because it felt 
good that that it happened and I was very grateful because I got to know the neighbors and I got to uh, meet them and and now I mean I work out in my front and and I've got so many friends you know we come they come by and hi Angela and, you know we're we're uh, connected I mean it, it it helped and it it just uh, is good to have it's a good feeling now I mean it, it it's it's home and it made it go from a, a scary place to well this is home for me now I moved to 1127 Van Buren in 1989, uh, found this house during a really difficult time. My sister was dying of cancer and um, she really thought it was a, a great house for me. It was small. I wanted a small house. Um, I loved the proximity from the downtown and I always admired this neighborhood. I had lived in Eugene seven years before I moved here. and. It became my home. I, I felt, I've always felt comfortable here. I love to walk. I love my neighbors. Uh, we really close-knit group of people and I survived cancer here. I raised my son. So my house represented like a cocoon, a safe place where I could get away from the world, get away from noise, uh, work in my, my garden. Just, just be here. I, I lo I've loved it here. And when the decision was made to build um, the apartment complexes behind me, none of us on the street knew that that was about to happen. And then on, I believe it was a January 3rd or 2nd, we were awakened at 7:30 with the, bull the the sound of bulldozers. They were getting the ground, you know, they had removed a, a historic, a really beautiful old historic duplex, and that was really, it was sad. It was, it was sad because the serenity that we had had was forever changed. It was traumatic to listen, to be awakened every day and realize you had no power as to what was going to be built behind you. Um, and it's a monstrosity. It, it looms, creates more darkness in my backyard with porches facing my backyard that are elevated so you can see everything in my yard even though I have really mature trees. Um, the sense of uh, quiet, safety, um, and privacy is gone. So for me it's been I don't go out in my backyard, I go feed the birds and the squirrels. I used to spend my summers barbecuing. I don't do that, I stay more in the front yard now. So it's just changed how I feel about Eugene too, about the how decisions are made. Um, nothing was, it could have been a beautiful, it could have been something remarkable. They could have, they could have made it really different if they involved the neighborhood or thought about the historic value of the neighborhood. It does not fit in. I've been a single mother for a long time and this is the legacy, what I would leave to my son and he doesn't want to be here anymore. When I learned that the neighborhood infill standards had been passed, I was very happy for this neighborhood because it, it deserves to be preserved in a way that fits with what it was intended to be. But for me, it's, it's, too, it's too late. Um, sometimes I get really mad when I walk down a street where I know that I, I'll see a big lot and I know that it could never happen there. So at least there's been a change that, that gives me hope for the future for this neighborhood and the environment.
when I was on the planning commission, infill compatibility came about because of the the, uh, the, the mandates to begin really understanding as a community uh, how our urban growth boundary and how our land supply um, predictions were really going to fit together. And uh, the effort was uh, to, to look at how we could use the land we have inside the urban growth boundary to its best capacity to try to absorb the infill that we knew was going to be coming. Understanding that there is going to be more population growth, there is going to be some higher density, but there are some really special neighborhoods um, uh, that deserve and really should be a part of the fabric of our community uh, livability, the, the health. What the neighborhood realized on the ground was that unintended consequences of good intentions on a citywide level were causing a lot of negative impacts for them and the builders and developers working in their neighborhoods didn't understand their part in that process. The neighborhood organizations got together, there are three neighborhood organizations that were involved in, in working on this, the Jefferson neighborhood, the South and the West University neighborhoods, and they share similar characteristics and then they have some very unique differences between them. Um, there are a lot of different demographics, there are a lot of renters, there are a lot of students, there are a lot of elderly folks, there are uh, um, uh, homeowners, single-family residential homeowners, there are apartments, so it's quite an interesting mix for this relatively small community of Eugene. Um, it's the petri dish area of this community, and so there's a lot going on and there's a lot of friction and there's a lot of potential for problems. I think it helped people on both sides of our growth equation understand more about what is really important um, in neighborhood preservation also opened their eyes to challenges of how do we earn our living by being developers and making more housing to do this in a manner that is not just our conventional style of building because we now have these other compatibility issues and this other kind of form-based framework to compare it to and to design around and to be sensitive uh, really about the whole collection of what makes a community livable. The impressive thing about this organization is not what they prevented or not what they stopped or not what they did, but how they created a code structure and an educational structure for builders and developers who want to come into their community in the future, into their neighborhoods in the future, and um, facilitated the development, the evolution of their neighborhoods in a healthy and positive way for everybody. That's the real home run here. That's the real wonderful thing about what these neighbors have done, is, is that they have created specific code language and specific guidelines for the greater community that will apply to their neighborhood but will also be able to be applied and, and used to, to help other developers and other builders in other parts of this community um, to also aspire to doing the right thing. That's the beautiful thing about what they've done.